Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gate, O Jerusalem. Amen. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Amen. To you, our visitors and family, it is a pleasure to have you come and worship with us this morning. Yes, it is. Here at One Way Assembly, we sincerely pray that you find the occasion to come and worship with us again. We want you to know that our doors are always open to you. Wherever you go, we pray that this worship service will uplift and encourage you. We would like to acknowledge those that celebrated a birthday between last Sunday and today. Please stand. Amen. 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 God be the glory. Amen. We know God is able to do all things. Amen. How many know that God has brought you from a mighty long way? Amen. And we couldn't be here if it wasn't for his grace and his mercy. Amen. So we just say thank you, Lord, thank because you, Lord. you have made a way out of no way. Yes. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget. How you set my soul free Jesus, I'll never forget How you brought me out yes. Jesus, I'll never forget No, never Jesus, I'll never forget What you've done for me Jesus, I'll never forget How 
Amen. Amen. Can't forget. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Myself, Pastor Marvin Saucer of One Way Assembly, where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. No man cometh unto the Father except he be drawn by him. It Amen. is good to see that God has Amen. drawn each and every one of you to his sanctuary today to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And it's good to see those who are with us on Zoom. We want to welcome those, those who are on Facebook with us as well. And it's good to see the sanctuary filled today. Amen. 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 It's good to see my dad in the house. Yeah, amen. Jackson amen. with us today. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Just want to welcome, welcome, welcome each and every one of you yes, Lord. as children of God in this place. Amen. amen. Just excited. Today is amen. a beautiful day yes, to be in God's house. You know we only get 52 Sundays in a year, right? Amen. And God is pretty much saying, I want to practice with you what it will be like these 52 Sundays in each year. Amen. This is the only time believers, Christians, born-again Christians, come together to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is just rehearsed because when we cross over, it's all day, every day, Amen. being with the Lord. And you only here for an hour and a half, right? right? But it's amazing that we work on these jobs for eight hours, and God is only asking for an hour and a half of your time. Amen. Each Sunday. Isn't that something? Amen. But I'm just so excited to be here with you. Again, to God be the glory. And God is doing some amazing things because we have this thing here at One Way Assembly called the Messenger Moment Minute. Where someone is going to come and stand and give us a daily word for our week. Just a little something in your spirit to help encourage you along your journey throughout this week. So I'm going to have my sister Pam come and help us. Amen. 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 Our daily word in our soul. Amen. Isaiah 61, 1 and 3. He stole on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Beauty in place of soul. One evening I noticed neat rows of soul in a vacant lot near my home. Each row contained small green leaves with tiny buds peeking out the next morning. I stopped. In my tracks, when I saw a patch of beautiful red tulips sprouting in the lot. The previous fall, a group had planted 100,000 buds in empty lots throughout the south side of Chicago. Amen. They chose red to symbolic how red means lending discrimination by banks had impacted neighborhoods where primarily minority live, where the minority live. The tulips symbolic the houses that could have been in those lots. God's people have endured many changes from being exiled from their homeland to discrimination like Redmonds. Yet we can still find hope. Isaiah reminds Israel during a time of exile that God would not leave them. He gives them a crown of beauty Amen. in place of ashes. Even the poor would re receive good news. God promised to exchange despairing spirits with a garment of praise. All of those images evoke his splendor and would bring joy to the people who would now be oaks of righteousness Amen. instead of de dejection, exile. 
Those tulips also show that God can create splendor from dirt yes. and discrimination. Come on, now. Come on now. I look forward to seeing the tulips each spring and more importantly, renewed hope in my neighborhood and other communities. Amen. Where in your community have you seen beauty replace despair? How can you help create help beauty in place of despair? Thank you, God, for the beauty you allow me to see even when my circumstances seem dim. But you know, in our lives, it has been so many things that has occurred. But when you look to Jesus and you know him as your personal savior, he can make all despair in your life become renewed. And when we have a creation from God within our spirit, you can't help but to utilize what he gives you in wisdom and knowledge to do something positive. Amen. You know, I know that God has blessed me and I have created something that he has given me. Just like he has given my son, my daughter, and others that's in my life created things to Amen. do. And he will bless you to keep renewing his spirit. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah
It's a right now word for us today. Amen. It's a rhema word. Mm. It's a word that cleanses, it clears, yes. it fills, it guides, and shows us the way. Oh, yes, yes Lord. Lord, again, we thank you for this moment and privilege to open your book, to read it, digest it, and understand it. We ask these blessings in the matchless, priceless name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. 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 Let's give God amen. some praise. Amen. We have a very fond and familiar text before us this morning, the gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. This passage deals with connecting to the true power source. All right. I will be reading this in a basic English version for your hearing. Verse 1 reads as follows. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. You know what I like about that? His word. Jesus is identifying that there is a gardener present. And his father is the gardener. And he is the vine. And surely in a few moments, we will find out that we are the branches. And we have to be connected at all times. That's right. Verse 2 says, he cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. He also trims every branch that produces fruit to prepare it to produce even more. That's right. Good word. See, you have to trim the rosebud for the rose to blossom. Right. You follow my drift? <laughs> Verse 3 says, you have already been prepared to produce more fruit by the teaching of I have given you. Amen. Jesus is saying you have the ability to do great things. That's right. But you must stay connected to me. Amen. He's already foreseen what you're going to do because Jesus came to do the ultimate plan of salvation. Amen. You remember he said, Greater work shall you do. Yeah. Remember he said that? That's right. But you have to remember Jesus left here at the age of 33. Right. Now, I might mess with y'all a little because some of us are older than the age of 33 in this room. <laughs> and sometimes we have to realize, did we get started yet? Okay, Jesus said, you're going to do greater things than me. That's right. You've actually been here longer than Jesus. So we have work to do. But he's saying, I have set some things in place for you to produce more fruit. Why is that? Because I've taught you. Verse 4 says... Stay joined to me. All right. And I will stay joined to you. That's good right there. As long as you stay with Jesus, he's going to be with you. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right, right. Then he says, no branch can produce fruit alone. Amen. If you think you want to try to do this by yourself, give it a shot. Ah, if you want to think you're like the Lone Ranger, the Lone Ranger always needed help. Right. Yeah. He had Tonto, didn't he? Yes. You're going to always need some help. Right. That's right. You can't do this by yourself. You must stay joined to me. That's what he said. Oh, but look at verse 5, which is something very special. Verse 5 says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you stay joined to me and I to you, you produce plenty of fruit. Amen. That's right. Mm. But there's a very interesting last statement that says here, but separated from me, you won't be able to do anything. That's the truth. Amen. You have so many people trying to accomplish the will of God without him. Right. 
he says, but separated from me, you won't be able to do anything. That's what he said. But verse 6 lets us know that if you don't stay joined to me, you will be like a branch that has been thrown out and has dried up. Amen. All the dead branches like that are gathered up, thrown into the fire and burned. See, if you don't do anything in Jesus, and if you're not joined to him, he's basically going to dispose of you. Yes. How many of you have three sets of cans aside your house? The blue one is for what? Recycling. Recycling. Oh, come on. The brown one is for what? Trash. Trash. And I believe the green bin is what Jesus is talking about right now. Yes. If you're not being utilized, Jesus is going to put you in the bin and roll you out to the curb. Yep. Isn't that, that, that's what I'm trying to make it plain for you, right? So we got that under control. Verse 7 says what? Stay joined together with me and follow my teachings. If you do this, you can ask for anything you want. And it will be given to you. That's good assurance to know that. Jesus has blessings for you if you stay connected to him. But a lot of us are trying to accomplish and receive without being connected to Jesus. So the question is, where are you getting it from then? That's right. Hmm. Well, verse 8 gives us so much insight. He says to do what? Show that you are my followers by producing much fruit. He's basically saying, if you're connected to me, let people see that you're connected to me. If you are a branch, there should be fruit visible on your tree, right? There's a problem if you claim you're an apple tree, but I see oranges. You claim you're a plum tree, but we see lemons. Something is wrong with that. Yeah. And some of y'all might look like those nice plastic flowers. <laughs> Artificial. These are the plants that sit in your house. You don't have to water them. They look good and nice, but the dust forms on them. Because you're not doing nothing. Right. And if you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus, some of us are not doing nothing. That's why we're a little dusty. All right. All right. That's all right. right. He says, when you do this, yeah. you will bring off yeah. to my father. Right. That's good. Right. We're trying to give yeah. God the glory. Yeah. We're trying to give him the right. honor and praise that he deserves. All right. All right. So if you're connected to me, you should be able to see something. Yeah. That's right. right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Verse 9 right. says, good, good. I have loved you as the Father has loved me. Now continue in my love. Amen. There's something else inside of Jesus, which is love, that comes from the Father to Jesus. That means if you are branch, you're supposed to have love in you. Amen. Right. Amen. Last verse, verse number 10, it says, I have obeyed my Father's commands. And he continues to love me. In the same way, if you obey my commands, I will continue to love you. Amen. 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 I've just read for your hearing the gospel according to St. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 10. For your hearing. Good word. Blessed are they who hear. Blessed are they who understand, but apply a very special blessing to the doer. Amen. This morning, I would like to deal with section F 
of verse 5, where it says, but separated from me, you won't be able to do anything. Amen. Wow. That's true. For a few moments, I would like to speak to you. I would like to talk to you. I would like to explain to you. I would like to show you something. Lights, please. I would really, really, really like to explain and expound something for you this morning. I would like to teach, preach a message entitled Extension Cord Christians. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Talk to me. Extension cord Christians. Okay. When Jesus talks about being connected to him, uh -huh. you should receive power from him, correct? Amen. That's true. Amen. Amen. Now, the reason why I entitled this message Extension Cords Christians simply because if you're connected to Jesus, you're a Christian, right? Amen. So I don't really need to be trying to explain anything to no one outside a Christian. Mm -hmm. Come on now. But the sinner will catch my drift along the way. Okay. See, Jesus expects the Christian to be connected to the main power source. Right. Therefore, I don't need an extension in between me and the power source. When you talk about the extension cord, its capacity is trying to make sure it reaches the wall outlet. That's right. Meaning the manufacturer of your microwave, of your refrigerator, your stove, dishwasher has already prescribed a length that should be nearby to connect to the 120 outlet. Right, right, right. But the extension cord comes into place because something is too far from the source. So I just stopped by this morning, this morning to make sure you're not too far from the main source who is Jesus to give you your power this Amen. morning. You see, today I want to talk about something we all use regularly. Extension cords. There are handy tools, aren't they? When an appliance or device can't quite reach the outlet, an extension cord steps in to bridge the gap. That's right. Just like some of you have cell phones, right? Right. Do you have an extension cord to your cell phone? Which is very interesting because most of the time your phone, I guess, should be near you. But if you have an extension cord to your cell phone, that's very interesting. And that's your business. I'm going to leave that right there. But what happens when we rely too much on these cords and forget to plug into the real source of power directly? This can serve as a powerful metaphor for our spiritual lives this morning. Amen. Let's think about the spiritual application of extension cord for a moment. Amen. While it's a helpful tool, it is not meant to be the permanent solution. Right. It's a temporary fix right. that allows us to stretch a little further, but it's not designed for long-term reliance. Right. When we rely too heavily on these cords, they can become overloaded and even hazardous. Mm -hmm. No one should have these old cords in your home That's right. unless they have the three-prong cord. <laughs> Let me mess with some of y'all. Do y'all still have an extension cord without the third prong? <laughs> Let me tell you, you would want to get rid of that today. Because the old cords 
that you have, they're usually brown and white. <laughs> there are two prongs. One of them is for power, which is positive, and a negative current. Now, you need to make sure you have the third prong there. That's that little round one. Mm -hmm. Notice both of them are flat like this, right? right, right. But that round one, that's your ground, All right. which is very important because if there's a power shortage, it's not grounded, and it will spark, and there you have it, a nice little flame in your room, mm -hmm. which should be. Amen. Get rid of them extension cords. I'm telling you now, better get the Home Depot today. <laughs> but listen, in our spiritual lives, we often find ourselves relying on various extension cords. Those things that give us a temporary boost or help us feel connected for a moment, but are not substitutes for a deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All right, go ahead. All right, now. These can be the routines you go through, right, right, your right. rituals, right, or right. even the faith of others. Right. Oh, it's a dangerous thing if you rely on somebody else's faith, somebody else's prayer, somebody else's knowledge. They are becoming an extension to you what you should be connected to. While they may support us momentarily, they are not meant to replace our deep connection with the true power source of Jesus Christ. As we examine today's message, we'll explore the dangers of extension cord Christianity and discover how to ensure we are plugged directly into the abundant and sustaining power of God through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll learn to identify these extension cords in our lives and find ways to reconnect with the source that never fails. Amen. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. That's what just you must be connected to him at all times to receive your power because the power of love is flowing through you. And how can you be in God's house and have a problem with people you see? All right. Remember, Jesus said in this true acid test, how can you say you love me whom you have not seen? Come on now. But got a problem, got a bickering, got an argument with the people you see right in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the true acid test. You yeah. claim you love God so much, but you've never seen him. But you don't even want to go in the restroom if you see this brother going there. You want to wait till he come out. You don't want to be in this particular space with this other woman in right. Christ Jesus. Right. And you say you love Jesus? Right. We true. experience that more like of this that. attitude right. and foolishness in God's house. Come on right. You see, it's easy for you to run at Walmart. Yeah. You see him or her coming? Oh, you can go down this aisle. Amen. But in God's house? All right. yeah. Why do we have this happening? Yes. This is so strange. This is a place where love is supposed to be exemplified. Amen. Right? Amen. God's spirit is yes. present supposed to be here. Amen. But we have these issues in God's house these yes. days. Amen. So much is going on, but guess what? Let's open our hearts and minds to find out what God has to say about us staying truly connected to him. Amen. Well, Amen. let's look at the context of St. John chapter 15. You see, in verses 1 through 7, okay. Jesus addresses, he is like a vine. Amen. What a perfect metaphor because Jesus knew the culture of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. These people were very studious in agriculture methods and gardening. Mm -hmm. So he always uses a parable, which is an earthly example of something with the heavenly meaning, yeah, to yeah, always right. make sure we have a proper understanding of what he's trying to say. All right. Then in verses 18 through 27, Jesus addresses and warns his followers the consequences of not being truly connected to him. Okay. Did you not know there's consequences? Yes. 
When you are not connected to That's Jesus right. Christ. That's right. And right. what I like about this, extension cord Christians. We shouldn't have extension cord Christians. That's why I wanted to stop by this morning and let you see it's important that you be connected, that you don't need an extension to Jesus. Amen. But you have so many other things in your way. You have so many people in your way. you got problems and other things that are in your way between you and Jesus Christ. Amen. You should be connected to him at all times. Right. But I like in John chapter 15 is a unique section of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Chapter and verse, the divisions were not original to the text. They were added centuries later to make it easier to find certain statements. Right. Still, this is one of the most few chapters composed entirely of words ascribed to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You see, some like John chapter 14, verses 6 and chapter 16 and 17, they come very close, but not every single word in those texts is something spoken by him. Leading up to this text, Jesus has been teaching about his status as the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. As he said in John 14 and 6. And the work of the Holy Spirit is talked about in chapter 15 and chapter 16. That's right. This chapter begins with one of Jesus' most famous analogies. His description of himself as the true vine. Yeah. God as the vine dresser and human beings as branches right, right. has a specific context that makes its lessons very clear. Right. Look at the connection. God, the vine dresser, mm -hmm. Jesus, the true vine, and we are the branches. Right. Right. You notice Jesus doesn't have fruit. We supposed to show them. Amen. Amen. Because That's I've right. never seen a tree with fruit connected straight to it. <laughs> it's on the branches, right? The branch. So it should be on you. Amen. Now I'm not, not going to ask you what kind of fruit is on you today. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what kind of tree you are. I'm not sure what kind of sap is inside you this morning. I don't know what you sipped on last night. <laughs> Hopefully no spiritual hangovers in the house. Today. But you at the right place at the right time for the right reason. I'm not sure what's in you, but you should be showing some visible fruit. Now what about the fruit of the Spirit? Did we forget about that in Galatians chapter 5? It talks about the fruit of the spirit are these and it names a very unique selection of love, joy, peace long suffering, meekness, temperance faith you notice it's not singular it's singular but it's not plural, it said the fruit of the spirit but I know some of y'all mess around and say the fruits of the spirit that's not what it says it says the fruit of the spirit is this so he's telling you right there you should be able to see some love on you you should be able to see some temperance oh and I love how the apostle Paul leaves the last fruit which is the most out of control fruit that we deal with self control they always say we say the best for last. So isn't it interesting that so many of us are connected to Jesus, but we're out of control. Wow. Yeah. He said self-control, yeah. but a lot of you are out of control. Yeah. Shout out to Janet Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> control. Okay. You see, this chapter begins with a beautiful analogy. Yeah. Just as some branches are in a vine, yes. but not connected to the life-giving aspect, so too can people be in a church or a Christian community, but not truly saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, I might need to say that again. All right. We're saying that just because you say you in Jesus, That's but right. you're not connected. That's right. Just as easy as some people say, oh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're at home right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm, I love the Lord who heard my cry, but I'm getting ready to go to brunch. <laughs> oh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm washing my car today. <laughs> oh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm going to some event a little later. We make so much opportunity to do everything else, but God is only asking for an hour and a half of your time. But you can go serve your job for eight hours with no problem. But you forgot who woke you up. That's right. See, I could just work with that poor man because he's the one who woke you up. That's right. He's the one who gave you traveling grade. Yeah. <laughs> He gave you the career, yeah. the education, the mindset yeah. to perform the duty on your job, and you yeah. can't tell them thank you for an hour and a half. What about the part time job? You still got a job. You able to serve man, but you can't give God an hour of your time. We make so many excuses, but you said you connected though. Yeah. But you're connected to everything. Yeah. But not him. Yeah. Yeah. This is so amazing. It, it, it startles me sometimes. Yeah. Again, the evidence separating these on, two is the fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Branches Thank that are legitimately you. part of the true vine are empty and they're even cut off or destroyed. Yeah. See, a lot of us like hanging out in the green bin. Yeah. That's the green bed by your curb. You see, my nephew is a gardener. He knows how to trim hedges, to cut grass, and get rid of weeds that are unwanted and unneeded. It is placed in a green bin. But a lot of places are green bins today. I'm not going to share with you. You know where you be at. <laughs> oh, so we have all different kinds of green bins where a lot of weeds and things that shouldn't be used. I'm going to mess with some of y'all. Y'all can name me some green bin places. <laughs> y'all want to have some fun for a minute? Let's just start with the bar. That's a green bin. But it's interesting how everybody enjoys themselves in the green bins. Yeah. Wow. Not realizing somebody's coming on Wednesday to get you. <laughs> See, you can only hang out in these places for a minute. Somebody's coming because they can use this. Y'all yeah. know that they use these scraps for fertilizer later. So in other words, you can be used over because y'all need to come to church and stop being compost. Right. What you going to be? You going to be in the church or you going to be compost? God going to use you if you're not even doing that. All right. You see that? He's going to use you if you're not doing nothing. So the choice is yours. You can get with this or you can get with that. Jesus, Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you going to serve. God is not playing because he has to get rid of weeds. They're good for nothing to be trimmed over. That's right. That's what yes. This is not about a loss of salvation. Hallelujah. The discarded branches were never meaningful part of life of the vine in the first place. Amen. You say you connected, but we don't see any fruit. Amen. You have a lot of churches. Let me mess around for a minute. Some churches might be a dump. They got a lot of weeds in there growing up because nobody's working. Why do you think Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few? Right. That's right. It's a shame that the harvest is plentiful, but very few working. What that is saying is we have many trees, much grass, but everybody don't have some blades. Right, right. Everybody don't have a lot. We gotta cut some of this stuff down because it's growing out of control. Right. And you can see the effects of the world is today. Right. We see hatred, civil wars. Yeah. We have oh, stuff oh. going over in Israel. We yeah. have too much around us in our cities, the killings, the misuse yes. of so much. Right. You can see the effects. Shout out to Keith Sweat. Remember he said something, something, something. Something, something just ain't right. 
He used something so many times. Let's look at it. Something, 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 something just ain't right. Bad English, but it works. I like it. Something, 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 something just ain't right. Something not right in today's church either. We see so much going on in God's house. Ridiculous. Did anybody see the video of the man came up with a firearm? Yes. Tried to shoot the pastor while yeah. giving a message. Yeah. 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 God is good because God allowed the gun not to go far away. Yeah. Somebody rushed him and dealt with the situation. It's a mess out here. We're talking about being connected. If you're connected, you won't have any of that. As he does often, in this discourse, Jesus connects <laughs> obedience to love. Amen. Those who truly love and abide in him will naturally adhere to his teachings. Yes. Amen. Those who don't follow his teachings show through disobedience yeah. that his words are not abiding in him. Right. Is his word in you today? Yeah. <clears throat> or something else in you today? Amen. Listen. This analogy also involves the depth to which born-again believers can have access to God's power Amen. in order to accomplish his will. That's the beauty of being a born-again Christian. You have God's power in you, and you're connected to him, and whatever you want and you need, you just ask him. Did anybody say thank you this morning? When you first wake up, that should be the first thing you say. Is thank you, Lord, for opening my eyes for another day. Somebody didn't get up today. Did you not know they have a database that tells you every different type of death that occurred on the planet? Whether it's by sickness, car accident. Shootings, killing, suicides. Would you like to know that they can tell you how many people didn't wake up today? You would be astonished. And you would be like, you mean to tell me God stopped by my residence this morning? All right. Hallelujah. Out of all over the world, he stopped by your bedside and woke you up. That's a big responsibility to have. Even if you take a nap, you take sleep for granted. Did you not know you are at the state of death when you're sleeping? Yes. There are five stages to sleeping. When you get to the fifth stage, this is when you're dreaming. Yes. Your heart rate drops. Your blood pressure goes down. Your blood is moving slowly in your body. Yes. But God stops by and wakes you up. It wasn't your alarm clock. It wasn't the text. It wasn't your notification. Yes. It wasn't the phone ringing. Right. It wasn't somebody saying, hey, you got to get up. I don't know who that was, but anyway, somebody woke you up. Yeah. It was God yeah, who allowed you to wake up today. Yeah. Yes. That's the truth. Jesus is in the middle of a long discourse given to his disciples, which began during the Last Supper. He presents the analogy of a vine and branches. Then repeats his command to for every believer to love each other. Mm -hmm. God wants you to love one another. Is that hard to do? Mm -hmm. It's bad enough we have family issues where well, we can't even love family. Now that's I'm not even, some people have better relationships with your co-workers than your family. Isn't that something? You just can't wait to get to work. <laughs> Left the house, going through some stuff. Oh, you can't wait to get in that little break room and chop it up. Isn't that something? I know. He says Jesus also warns about how the unbelieving world will hate and persecute Christians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know persecution is coming, right? Yes. Right. Always say, cheer up, because it's going to get worse. <laughs> For the Christian, you don't have to worry about nothing. If you're connected, you're good. 
Your faith will get you through everything. Right. But I know a lot of us put fear over faith. That's true. But it should be faith over fear. Amen. Amen. You got to make sure your faith is strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. This leads also into the teaching of chapter 16, which focuses on perseverance in the face of our trials. True believer. But you know what I would like to do for a moment? Here are four concepts of extension cords we're going to look at. Let me give you number one. Let's talk about the role of an extension cord. Well, guess what? Extension cords are designed to help when the power source is just out of reach. That's what it's for. They are not meant to be a permanent solution but a temporary fix. And I know some of y'all got extension cords laying, running around all over the place. They've been there for the last 10 years. <laughs> oh. okay. Similar, in our spiritual law, we sometimes rely on extension cords, external sources, and temporary fixes, rather than directly connecting to God, who is our true power source. And you know what I love about, it talks about how a picture is worth a thousand words. Right. Uh -huh. And I love having these little commercials to help y'all out this morning. Let me see, let me help y'all out. So I'm trying to help y'all understand something about these extension cords. Well, what we have here is a problem. <laughs> I want you to look at this very carefully and I'm gonna break this down for you what's happening here. The extension cord purpose is to reach the power source, which is the 120 volt to provide power to what is needed. My question to you today is, what does this cat need this cable for? <laughs> you see, a lot of you want something, but you're far away from it. First of all, the little cat can't reach the cord and you see the cord can't reach the wall. So there's a disconnect. And a lot of you are disconnected and you're trying to find what you need through other people. Yeah. Isn't that something? Did somebody say cash at me? <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. See, a lot of times you want something but you're trying to get it the wrong way. And you start stretching. You start getting out of, things are out of reach. And you're trying to pull and tug and it's not happening. You are stuck just like this little cat. And don't even need that. <laughs> you want something, you don't even need it? God knows exactly what you need. Yes, he does. What you want. Do you really need it? That's right. Right. Some of y'all want stuff and don't even know why you think you need it. Right. God knows you don't need it, but he'll give it to you anyway. Right. See, I like meddling sometimes because <laughs> some of us don't like being alone. <laughs> but we will do anything just to not be alone. <laughs> we will go through extreme circumstances, but God got you covered. You have to plug into him who is your ultimate source. Right, right, right. Oh, little kitty, just trying. I don't know if the cat wants to plug in something, but a lot of us are just like that. We just keep reaching. We keep trying to reach for stuff and don't even know where you need it. Right. Uh-oh, what about you reaching for a relationship today? You reaching for a friendship today? What you reaching for? You, now watch this. You might be in a friendship or relationship with somebody and they're not even connected to you. That's right. <laughs> Isn't that something? You plugged in, you think you in. You just like this cat. You study asking for this, you study for what's happening? Let me leave y'all alone. I try to make this easy for y'all sometimes. I love commercials. So now, now y'all getting the click. When I say commercial break, y'all know where we going. Y'all follow me? Yeah. See, I try to make 
church not so much as a place where people act so uppity. Yeah, right. <laughs> we can relax. You have fun and learn. You can wear what you like. Let me mess with some of y'all. <laughs> I passed by Nordstrom's yesterday. I would love to go in there and ask someone, excuse me, do you know where your church clothes are? <laughs> they don't have a department called church department or church clothes. God has never been concerned about your exterior. All right. As soon as you ask somebody, can you come to church with me today? What's the first thing they say? I ain't got nothing to wear. But you had something to wear last night. You was able to wear something to the Conquer Pavilion. You was able to find something to the Paramount. You was able to wear something to the club. Watch this. You going to a picnic tomorrow, isn't it, aren't you? What you wearing tonight? We get so caught up into exterior. Yeah, that's good. Your hat, your purse, yeah. your clothes, yeah. your shoes, yeah. Yeah. your suit, your handkerchief, your fedora, your right. gloves, your gaiters. Oh. <laughs> then you turn God's house into a runway. Uh. <laughs> I love meddling because I, there's a message in the meddling. <laughs> You mean to tell me you wouldn't spend $500 for an hour and a half? That's church. That's a church service right there. You spend all this money, and we have the biggest day where we really do this on Resurrection Sunday. All right. You haven't been to church since last year. But you go out Saturday and find at these malls and outlets something to just wear for an hour and a half, and then you show up late. <laughs> so all eyes on you. Shout out to Tupac. All eyes on you. You see, a lot of times we turn God's house into a runway. That's true. Look at me. And then we didn't see you at Bible study. <laughs> What's a shame is we're doing it online. Yeah. Still don't see that. Would you say that? <laughs> Still ain't fun. Yeah, good work. Got the game on in the background. <laughs> you can't be in Bible study at home with the game on. I was messing with some of y'all last Thursday and stuff. I said, what's the score? I just want to see what somebody else to. <laughs> Look at me y'all up. Number two. Identifying our extension cords. You gotta identify what's your extension cord. What are these extension cords in your life? They can be anything from attending church out of routine. Amen. Oh, let me mess with you. Some of you just get up because you ain't got nothing else to do. Some of us treat God's sanctuary a moment to worship him in spirit and truth for thinking God got a roll call when you was in kindergarten. Wow. Brother Harris, here. You think God is checking you off? <laughs> he wants to see did you serve him all week long? All right. Not to just show up here and think God got a checkbook. Right. Check, you're here. Yeah. Oh. That's good. It's amazing how we rely on other people's faith right. to get us through this. All right. All right. See, my mother prayed for me, yeah. and y'all know my spiel, because I didn't find the Lord Jesus Christ until 1993, April 18th. All right. This is 33 years into this. You see, 1992 on down, I was doing what I wanted to do when I get ready and what I felt like. Yeah. As I often tell you, I was a CME Christian. Which I don't deal with the pagan holidays, but I'm going to just make my point. You only see me on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. That was it. Three times a year. I thought that was fine and sufficient. Not knowing God wanted me to be about his business. Jesus said, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. That's why a lot of y'all business is in a disarray today. As I often say, when you take care of your business... I won't know your 
that you're not taking care of your business. It's okay. It's all good. Again, to, a lot of us seek validation through other resources, through extension cords. You seeking validation through Facebook. You seek validation through Instagram. You seeking validation through Snapchat, WhatsApp, social media, other material successes. This is what you do. These are your extension cords. While these can provide temporary boosts, they are not substitutes for a direct personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Listen, God does not care you got 10,000 followers. <laughs> My question is, what are they following you for? <laughs> I'm just curious. You got 5,000 friends on Facebook, which is the capacity. Why do you have friends over in Australia? <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just being nosy, I guess, right now. I'm nosy Nathaniel. I want to know, why is Herman in Alaska your friend? I'm going to mess with some of y'all. Ask them to cash up you a dollar. You got 5,000 friends. Let's see how that works for you. What are these people following you for? What are you offering them? Preach. Have you told them about the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Mess with some of y'all. Y'all know I like messing. Amen. Some of y'all, I just stopped by y'all page to see, can I find you? <laughs> you got others. I just want to see your face. I can't find you because there's something else going on. Yeah. But until we start letting people know we love Jesus, I guess. Right. Jesus said, are you ashamed? You are ashamed to own me. I will be ashamed to own you in front of my father. Now watch this. Did you ever hear closely what Jesus said? You ashamed of me of all of your friends. Family. Jesus only named one person he going to disown you from. Think about it. You have to stand before God, and when you look around, there's. Did you not know God has a room that is going to have everyone that existed from the pre Adamite society to the last person who was buried? Amen. That's some room. we talking everybody from the 1700s, everybody from the 1500s, everyone from B BC. Go be in one room at one time who ever lived. Wow. And Jesus said, I'm going to disown you and act like I don't know you just in front of my father only. I wasn't around in 1500. But if I want to act like I'm all that and I want to be ashamed of Jesus to let people know I'm a born again Christian saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and redeemed, you better check yourself for you. Wreck yourself. <laughs> Who quarter pound got a in it? <laughs> Listen, that was number two. Number three is the dangers of relying on extension cords. Yeah. Just like an overloaded extension cord can be a fire hazard, Relying too heavily on these spiritual substitutes can be dangerous too. That's right. Spiritual substitutes. Wow. They can lead to burnout, a shallow faith, and a disconnected relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. And we might find ourselves going through the motions without experiencing true spiritual growth. Come on. And y'all know what time it is. It's time for a commercial. <laughs> you see, what is going on here? Oh, Some of you are connected to too many things like bad people, bad relationships, bad friendships, bad situationships, and you're drained and weak. Yeah. You have too much going on in your life. 
Jesus says, only what you do for Christ will last. That's why you're burnt out on all these text messages. You burnt out on all these posts. You burn out on all these calls. You have a lot going on, my friend. And does your life look like this? You got too much going on. And what's sad about it? Church is not included in this. It would love, to, it would be nice to see if you plugged in at church like this. And plugged in your studying, Amen. your Bible studying, your praying, your fasting, mm -hmm. encouraging somebody, helping somebody. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people in our home that don't know the Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. That's where we should start right there. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be able to set up when I talked about this on Mother's Day. A mother has to leave a legacy. Watch this. I said a legacy of faith, though. Uh -huh. When you leave a legacy of faith to your family, Amen. that's why this generation don't know who God is. Right, right. Yeah. This generation is getting further and further away from God. Right, right. Our ancestors right. knew the Lord. Yes. Yeah. My mother taught us about the Lord. Yeah. We got to keep this going. Amen. Because our grandchildren got to know what to do. Amen. Our great-great-grandchildren know what to do. But it's interesting wow. with this generation of 30-year-old grandmothers. Wow. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? Amen. We have children raising children. Amen. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child Amen. in the way he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. Amen. You got to plant. Uh-oh, we talking about garden. Uh-oh. The vine, when you plant the seed, right. it's supposed to germinate and grow something. Right? Right. 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 We talking about the vine. That's what we that's what we're talking about. Right. Right. Okay. Just like yeah. extension right. cords. We have to be careful. Mm. Our lives are not looking like this. Y'all see the little ting 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 ting? Yeah, they're working on a power strip. Mm -hmm. That ting ting uh -huh. Is nothing going on in your life? <laughs> Y'all see that little ting, 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 ting? See, it's nothing going on in your life. How about that? Y'all just listen. Some of y'all think that's, that's, that looks nice, like sparkling. This is a shortage. And some of y'all sparking everywhere you go. Oh, you put that outfit on last night, you thought you were sparkling. <laughs> I know you thought you was all in a bag of chips and some sunflower seeds. You thought you was going on, and you was just shortaging everywhere you went. You sparking wherever you go. <laughs> Y'all something else, aren't you? Oh, that was number three. Number four. Uh oh. The overloaded extension cords. Imagine plugging into too many devices into an extension cord. See, a lot of y'all have plugged into people and doesn't even both been there. Because other people are already there. Yeah. There's stuff you getting involved in, you don't know what you're doing. And some people are just like the power strip, which I'm going to work with that in a minute. Give me a hot second. An overloaded extension cord, it gets hot. It might spark. And even start a fire. This is what happens when we overload our lives with activities or dependencies that are not directly connected to God. Amen. You got anybody around you that don't go to church? You got any people in your life that don't go to Bible study? You know anybody that you can't really talk to the Lord about? See, a lot of y'all got certain conversations with certain people. Amen. I can only talk about this with brother such and such, but I can't only talk to sister so and so about certain things. In other words, y'all tiptoe topics. Okay. Mm. Y'all have certain conversations with certain people in your life. Right. Now watch this. 
how many of them friends you got that you can call them and ask them to pray with you? All right, now. That's a good question. Yeah. That's good. But watch this. Girl, you think you can come with me to Concord Pavilion? Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> who's, who's performing? Okay. Isn't Babyface at Cash Creek next week? Let me leave y'all up. See, what I'm trying to help y'all, y'all quick to make a move on that kind of stuff. But when I say, you think you can come to church with me? Oh, excuses. We got too many of those. And a lot of us are burnt out on the excuses. Oh, man. I guess it's time for another commercial. I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help you to understand, is this you? Is this you having too much going on in your life? Question mark. Is this you? Is anyone or anything around you burning you out? <laughs> Are you living a hot and heated, overheated lifestyle? Right. Yeah. Is this you? Is he burning you out? <laughs> Is she burning you out? Are they burning you out? You have to be careful what you connect it to. All right. Because if you don't watch it, you go think you fool of the Holy Ghost flaming, <laughs> but you really just on fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Ohio Pledge. Oh. Fire. Fire. Huh. Huh. Y'all know the song? Mess with some of y'all. The millennials don't know nothing about Ohio Pledge. Y'all just think it's a state. <laughs> Look, Dad, that thing's a state. They don't know nothing about that. Serpentine fire. Earth, wind, and fire. Let me leave y'all alone. A lot of you are flaming just like this. Did anybody make you mad? This is symbolic of you. You was content, but you got a text. Got you mad. Phone call. Are there some people that Phone ring, you already know what the problem is. <laughs> they name tells you what they doing. <laughs> Complaining. <laughs> Talking crazy. <laughs> Cussing somebody out. Listen, you know who calling you. <laughs> you already know who you're dealing with. You got all these contacts. Let me mess with some of y'all. Y'all got a whole bunch of contacts, right? Uh, if you could go through your contacts and give them one name. Uh, uh, <laughs> who are these people in your phone? Uh, Foolishness? Uh, Ignorant? Uh, Moron? Uh, Conceited? Uh, narcissistic? I mean, y'all, it's all them. Uh, uh, one name. It might help you. Still block them? They gonna go private on you. They still trying to get plugged into you and cause this. Some of y'all smoking. Are you smoking today? Let me mess with some of y'all. Anybody got a new court? <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. This smoke smells different than a Newport. This smoke smells different than a crack pipe. This smoke smells different than weed. Let me, oh, y'all probably don't know what that is. Let me give y'all another name for marijuana. It's called the Devil's Lettuce. All right. And you don't need no salad dressing with that one. All right. <laughs> but you know what you need to do? Thank you. We need to be plugging into the true power source. Amen. Amen. St. John chapter 15, verse 5 reminds us that Jesus is the vine Amen. and we are the branches. To bear fruit and live out faith effectively, we must remain in Him. Amen. That's your answer. This means prioritizing our personal relationship with God through prayer, going to a Bible study, reading the Bible, going
going to church That's and living in That's obedience it. to his word. Is that all to do? I'm trying to give you a remedy, a prerequisite, and a prescription to have a connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. Very simple. When we connect directly with God, we receive a continuous power flow of his grace, wisdom, and strength. Very simple. Okay. Well, since we're dealing with power, okay. I've dealt with the extension cord. Now I have to deal with the power strip now. Everybody knows what a power strip is, right? That's right. The function of a power strip takes directly electricity from one outlet and distributes to multiple devices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Now I need to ask you a question. Uh -huh. If you're connected to Jesus Christ, who's the vine, mm -hmm. and we're the branches, mm -hmm. come on, come on. what are you giving out to people? Mm -hmm. Really? What you giving out? Mm -hmm. This mirrors how we as Christians should receive God's power and grace and then share it right. with share it. others. Amen. It's about being a conduit of God's love, blessings, and grace. Amen. Gifts. Amen. Commercial. See, a lot of you might not know what a power strip looks like, and I just want to make sure you do before you leave here today. <laughs> this is a power strip. This is not something that you play with. The difference between an extension cord and this device it gives it to multiple devices. Mm -hmm. Right there, that's the beautiful thing because you have to be careful if you plug in what you're giving to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This power strip takes power from the wall outlet and spreads it to each of its sources to provide power to it. Are you a good source or a bad source today? All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now watch this. Now. Y'all know some people who are bad sources like this, right? Oh, okay. And you plug into them. Yeah. They're giving you junk, uh, foolishness. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about the Lord. Oh, They're not right. helping you. All right, all right. Say that. And this is where we need to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Okay. Amen. Amen. We have to make sure we are the perfect conduit between Jesus Christ and our friends and family. Amen. This is the beautiful thing about the power strip. Okay. It disperses power evenly. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You can't give 120 here and then you want to give 50 over here. Right. Okay, now. It says it disperses power evenly. Okay, now. That's good. But watch this. Don't you treat some people different? Amen. Uh-huh. Uh -huh, I know you do. Don't you speak to some people and you don't speak to them? Oh, man. You look at certain people the same way. Some people, you are excited to see them and then we see the <laughs> you change. Like what kind of power yeah, strip are you? Yeah. You have the ability to give it evenly. Yeah. But no, you are selective with your current. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I know it. It's okay. That's good. That's Number good. two, understanding our source. Just as a power strip must be plugged into an outlet to function, we must stay connected to God. Our source of power is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Paraclete, the Ruach, the mighty rushing wind. Without this connection, we can't effectively distribute his love and grace. Right. That's right. Jesus reminds us in John 15 and 5. I'm the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Isn't it interesting that Jesus loves you, but you love this person 20%. You got 50, 100. You selected with your love. You can't do that. You got to love everybody. We 
we saw the problem that happened with Jacob and Esau. Y'all yeah, remember? Yeah. We have two parents that caused a problem with their children because the dad loved Esau and the mother loved Jacob. Amen. Some parents play favoritism That's right. with their children. Oh, yes. And you shouldn't do that because you stir up a problem in your nest okay. that you're not even tripping off of that's going to happen later. You can't do this. Your child, child came out of you. You have to love fulfillment of love at all times. I'm just sharing with you. That's a story from the Bible where there was love different in that family and it caused a big rift. Amen. Number three, you must be equipped to serve. Come on, preacher. You gotta be equipped to serve. Amen. But a lot of us don't have the equipment. So how are you gonna serve God if you don't if you're not equipped? That means you must read your Bible. You must study your Bible. And what I've been promoting lately, everybody got a Bible, right? Amen. Now watch this. I'm not even gonna say a show of hands. <laughs> Who got a Strong's Concordance in here? Do you mean in here, in here, or <laughs> Listen, the Strong's Concordance is a book that helps you interpret and break down the original language it was written in. That's right. Just because it was written in English, that's what we are accustomed to, right? That's our culture. But the Old Testament, the first 39 books, is written in Hebrew. Amen. And the 27 books in the New Testament is written in Greek. Just because it's in English, that doesn't mean that's the translation. You must know exactly what the writer wrote and meant in the context he's speaking. Come on now. But I mostly would love if everyone could grab a concordance so you can really study this book to understand what God is saying so you can get the strong essence of his meanings. Did you not know the word foolish? In Greek, we get the word moros. But in English, it means moron. Now, y'all know what a moron is, right? Jesus was basically saying, if you don't listen to what I'm saying to you, you're like a foolish builder. And if you are wise, your foundation will be a strong foundation that's everlasting. But when you are building on moral, moron concepts, you're just building for people to look at something. It's like a sand castle. Sand castle looks very beautiful, doesn't it? What happened when it rains? There's rain coming your way. There's storms coming in your life. That's why you got to be strong. Have a foundation of your faith in Jesus Christ. You must be equipped to serve. God has equipped each of us with gifts and talents. I don't have time to address it right now, but there is a difference between a gift and a talent. Oh, a gift means you were born with this. That's right. A talent is taught to you. Just like my son, for instance. He started playing drums at two years old. He hasn't been in any classes or nothing. He just heard his daddy playing. <laughs> he just started, he put the right hand over the left and did a four count and played the beat to Billy G at two years old. We just bought the set thinking he's gonna play it when he gets seven years old. I just wanted to be a heavy game. Fool me. He sat down and did one, two, three. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't get a chance to show you that. <laughs> Gifted. But a talent, somebody can show you how to play the piano. There's a difference between the two. Gifts and talents. Now watch this. You have a lot of gifted singers using their gift in the world. See that? When God gives you a gift, but watch this. He'll take it from you Amen. and give it to somebody else. Yes. So if you're not abiding in him, sure will. and you're not serving him, all 
what he gave you, he's going to snatch it and give it to somebody else. You know, that's what Daryl was tell us right there. He gave one a certain amount, he gave, then they multiplied it. The one who wasn't doing nothing, he gave it to the one who multiplied more and turned it over. Gave it increase. Likewise, the various devices plugged into a power strip, each gift serves different purposes. That's right. But draws the same source. Oh, I don't know if y'all caught that. And who's that source? See, the power strip is distributing 120, 120. But they are doing things differently. But it's all building the edification of God's kingdom. That's all the gifts that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse chapter 14. 1 Peter 4 and 10 encourages us to use these gifts to serve others. Amen. Managing God's grace in its various forms, we're not meant to hoard these blessings, but distribute them generously. Amen. How many hoarders in the house? Anybody hoarding stuff? Anybody holding on to that dress size 5 but you're 15 now? We all are. We all are. Come on, let's keep it real. Holding on to that wig. Yeah, come on now. Wait for a minute. My brother got that blazer. Can't fit it no more. It becomes a cape now. <laughs> now, let me tell you something about shoes. Shoes, your feet don't shrink. <laughs> Bro, so if you have a pair of skis, that's your business. <laughs> Listen, we are to distribute equally what God gives to us, just as much as you plugged in. What if that power strip says, I'm not going to charge your phone today? You expect that when you plug it in there, it's going to go ding and you're going to charge. What if that power source says, I don't like all them texts you've been sending. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't like all the calls you've been making. You've been on Facebook more than study. Uh, and that charger says, I'm not charging this phone today. You better give me some time. <laughs> the power strip distributes evenly. It doesn't Look at people and say, hmm, I'm not going to do you got to love at all times. Number four, the active power strip. Isn't there something? You got some power strips that look like they durable. They're going to do the most. <laughs> not even plug in. <laughs> got to plug it in. I don't care how good the power strip looks. Like it can do some amazing things. It looked like it could run your whole house like a backup generator. You still got to plug it in. Think of an active power strip in a busy office. Powering computers, phones, copy machines, lamps. Each device serves a purpose. But none would function without the power strip distributing the power it receives. Amen. Similar, we are actively to distribute God's blessings to those around us. Are you distributing out lies? Are you distributing out deceit? Are you cussing people out? Talking about people? Spreading gossip? Is that what's coming out of your power source today? Now watch this. You might receive 120 of power, but you gave somebody Gossip that said 170. In other words, you over peaking, lying more than what the truth is. All right. All you know how they say, if I start to tell dad one plus one is two. Now that should stay the same formula, right? Yeah. Now by the time we get back there, somebody talking about one plus one equal eight. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know the formula. The truth is what it is. Right. They always say this. A lie will go all the way around the world before the truth could put its socks on. That's what they say. Number five. Avoiding the overload. 
While power strips are useful, they can also become overloaded if too many high-powered devices are plugged in them. That's right. This can lead to short circuits or even fires. In our spiritual lives, this teaches us the importance of balance and boundaries. A lot of us don't have boundaries that we need to set with people. You didn't let somebody talk crazy to you. You didn't let physical abuse come into camp. You're letting mistreatment come into camp. You've been helping people and they haven't been helping you back. Well, watch this. You didn't help so many people that is hurting you. What happens to the people you've been helping, but it's hurting you to help them? You got to set some boundaries, because if not, you will be out of bounds. If you don't set no boundaries, oh yeah, you got to watch family. They'll wear you out. <laughs> we must serve diligently but also take care of our spiritual health to avoid burnouts Amen. Amen. Jesus often withdrew himself to solitude places to pray Jesus got away didn't he Luke 15 and 16 setting us an example how to follow some of you are caught up on your own pillar Let's, here we go again. I'm trying to make this time for a commercial. Somebody needs to say, Woosah. Woosah. <laughs> Some of y'all are just like this. The struggle is real. The struggle is real when you caught up, tangled up, and not in an entanglement with Jesus, though. Y'all okay, remember when Jada Pinkett saying, I got caught up in a little entanglement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let me share something with you. It's okay to be in an entanglement with Jesus. All right. Come on. But you're tangled up in other stuff. Mm. Yeah. Who got you in a headlock? <laughs> All right. Who got you bent to the floor? Wow. Let me mess with you even more. <clears throat> Who are you playing Twister with? <laughs> <laughs> is your hand on yellow? Your left hand on yellow? But your mind is somewhere else? <laughs> your foot, your right foot is on red? But you thinking about him? Your left foot is on green. But you're thinking about something else. Please do not play twister with your life. Right. Now, I need to ask you a question. Y'all know how twister work. You got to spin, right? right? Who's spinning you? Right. Who's spinning your game? Better quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, encouraging others to plug in. Oh my goodness. You have it to encourage others to plug in. Let me mess with some of y'all. Who got plug in the house? <laughs> you know, I covers everything. I'm not gonna miss nothing. When I'm talking about a subject matter, you best believe I'm going in. Full throttle. <laughs> Plug ins. Anybody got a plug in? No. Nope. Nope. Well, the, the, the operation of the plug in is if this room don't smell right. Oh, wait a minute. Y'all didn't know what I was talking about? When I said y'all. When you plug in the plug ins, it's going to bring about a fragrance and aroma that's better was in there. And some people's lives just smell. <laughs> Somebody life might need a little secret. <laughs> but it's not telling a secret, it's being told. But what I'm saying to you is we need to plug in. And it it's easy to plug into the right sources. Will we encourage others to plug in? 
we have the power. We're connected to Jesus, right? Amen. So we need to encourage others who we see around us who lives might need a plug. Y'all yeah. catch what drift? Somebody life don't smell good. It has an aroma of sin. But I know one thing, we need to encourage others to plug into Jesus and he'll change the room, the environment, and the sin. Right? A power strip not only distributes power, but it also invites others to connect. What does a power strip look like if it's only one item plugged into it? It's saying I got five other outlets available to share. So a lot of you who are plugged into Jesus, who is the vine, you're not inviting others to plug into you. Ooh, did y'all catch that application there? You just have one person plugged in that you know love the Lord. What about the other people in your friends the list that don't know the Lord? They, there's room. You see that? We should encourage those around us to connect to God's power too. By sharing our faith and inviting others into a relationship with Jesus, we expand the reach Amen. of God's grace. Yeah. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. And I know, last commercial break, then we out of here. <laughs> there we go. We are talking about plugging in, right? Yeah. What are you plugged into though? Uh oh. Unplug from the sin in your life and please plug in to Jesus Christ in your life. Come ahead and please. Unplug from sin. It's very simple and easy. You gotta do it. We must do it. Lastly, because I wait, I see my checker flag moving. <laughs> Four practical steps for balancing your distribution today. Amen. Number one, stay connected to God. Amen. Pray, pray regularly. Bible study keeps us plugged into the source. Number two, know your limits. Understand the capacity. And set boundaries to prevent spiritual overload. Yeah. This is something you got to do. Number three, serve wisely. Mm -hmm. Use your gifts where they are most needed and effective. Right. You can't be trying to tell people about the Lord if you do another stuff. Right. Did you not know 90% of the people? Will not come to church because they're watching you. You can't be doing the fool and then ask them to come to church with you. They try to figure out who your pastor. <laughs> well, let me share something with you. I can only do so much. It's on you. To do the rest. Right. Amen. 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 That's it. Number four, you gotta rest and recharge. That's right. Make time for rest and personal renewal to maintain your spiritual health. Yeah. And let me give you that was the four steps for a balanced distribution. Now the four practical steps to reconnect, and we out of here. Number one, daily devotion. <laughs> Set aside time each day for prayer and reading the Bible. This will direct you in the right path. They say Jesus is on the main line, right? Yes. This is your direct line to God. Yes. Community. Engage in a meaningful fellowship with other believers who will encourage and challenge you to grow in your faith. <laughs> we don't have enough people around us to encourage us. To support us, challenge us sometimes. My favorite verse is Proverbs 27 and 17, where it talks about iron sharpening iron. Amen. Yeah. So as a man sharpened the continents of his spring. Right. We are to sharpen each other. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know somebody will be cutting barbecue tomorrow. 
You ever saw the person at Thanksgiving stand at the head of the table, pull out this iron that doesn't look like a blade, but it's interesting that they're going cut, clack, clack. It's iron sharpening iron. So the other blade will be able to have the task to slice into the meat. If you want to try and sharpen a butter knife, go ahead and do so. What I'm saying is you need somebody that's on your level to sharpen you. Yeah. Amen. Why am I trying to sharpen a plastic fork or a plastic knife with a knife sharpener? It's got to be iron sharpened and iron. Iron sharpened iron. Service. Use your gifts and talents to serve others. Not for recognition, but as an act of worship. Rest. You got to rest in God's presence to avoid temptation to fill every moment with activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Conclusion. Let's make a commitment today to examine our lives for extension cords that are keeping us from directly connecting to our true power source, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Make sure you are plugged in. Make sure you are connected and nothing in between. A lot of us got stuff in between you and Jesus. By plugging directly into Jesus Christ, we ensure that we are not just surviving, but thriving in our spiritual journey. Remember, apart from him, you can't do nothing. Let's stay connected and allow his power to flow through us, bearing much fruit in the kingdom of God. Let's give God some praise. As we understand, right. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yeah. If Jesus came to give us all eternal life and salvation, but Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. So you don't have to be a victim today, Amen. but you can be victorious. Jesus was tried all night long. So you don't have to be depressed, short-circuited, but delivered. Jesus was beaten. He was bruised and accused. So you don't have to be down, but we must lift him up. He was hit with a bag over his head. So you don't have to be powerless, but you must praise him. He walked the Via Dolorosa, which is called the way of suffering. And he did this for you and I. When they escorted him to a place called Golgotha's Hill, which is Calvary, they drove one nail into his right wrist. They drove another nail into his left wrist. And they drove another nail into his feet. And this same Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He said, Father, forgive them, for I know not what they do. And he said, it is finished. And he yielded up the ghost. My question to you is, are you finished? Jesus said, greater work shall you do in my name. Amen. And when Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took him down from the cross, they placed him in an old borrowed tomb. And on that good Friday, he stayed there all day Friday. All day. All day. He stayed there all day Saturday. Yes. But something amazing, something spectacular, yes. something astonishing happened. Early Sunday morning. Early. And Jesus rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth. And the same Jesus who rose from the dead is coming back in like now. And he asked, Will you be ready? Will the church be ready? He said, Will I find faith when I return? You see, people borrow many things from me. They borrow tools, they borrow sugar, they borrow money. But Jesus borrowed a tomb 
that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea, and he gave it back to him in three days. With eternal interest, though. So today, he's given us all salvation, and he lives on and sitting at the right hand of the Father. And that's it. That's all he did. And he's offering us today all hands bowed, all eyes closed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, thank you for being our true source of power and strength. Yeah, Jesus. Help us to identify and remove anything that keeps us from directly connecting to you. Thank you Renew our hearts and minds so that we may remain in you and bear much fruit. Yes. Yes. And Lord, if there's someone today who does not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and if you want power, you may have felt powerless. You may have felt disconnected. You may have felt not charged up. Jesus said to you today, I got you. And if you don't know Jesus, all you do is just raise your hand. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you can know this power source today. And if there's someone who wants to make one way assembly your church home, you say, well, Lord, I've been all over these other places trying to plug in. I'm just not getting what I'm getting. But today I feel something a little different. I learned something that I may have not understood. That's because you're plugged in because one way assembly is plugged in to the power source. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. If you want to make one way assembly your church home, I do just raise your hand. And then we have done as the Lord has commanded us to. Let us give God some praise. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And this is the best part of the service. Where we discern the Lord's body, which is holy communion. Amen. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering until I come again. Yes. Oh. He said, do this often. Not just once a month. That means 12 times out of the year. Ooh, that's right. Jesus. We have one way assembly. We do exactly what Jesus said. We do it often. All right. Amen. He said do it often. Because all we are doing is reassembling what he did at Calvary. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard of. Today. Amen. But at this moment, Father, we just come asking forgiveness for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. Lord, we ask that you remove anything that's not right within our hearts, spirit, minds, and our souls. Yes, Lord. Lord, forgive us for yes. all our sins of commission and our sins of commission. Lord, cover us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Lord, fill us and cover us with your blood. Lord, if we looked at somebody, said something, yes. or thought something inappropriate, so Lord, Lord, forgive us. Please. Lord, at this moment, as your people receive the wafer that is symbolic of your body, which is the bread, and the juice that is symbolic of the blood, wash us with it. Let your people receive you the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We ask these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 Receive you the body. Amen.
everybody well. I couldn't really breathe, so bear with me. Take your time. Take your time. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Come on now. In the name of Jesus. As we hold this bread that is symbolic of Lord Jesus Christ's body, He said, Do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffer until I come again. Amen. Yes, Lord. He said, Take ye all of it in me, and now I'll give Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment of these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment of the soul. And when we hold this cup, which is symbolic of the fruit of the vine, the shedded blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this blood was given for the New Testament and for the New Covenant. He said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering until I come again. He said, drink you all of it and you all be pure. Mm. Amen. And Lord, we did this not for the Lord's work of his mortal body, but we did this for the Lord's work of his soul. And we here at One Way Assembly offer these opportunities to help and support us through Amen. your giving. You can find us on Givelify through as One Way Assembly. And you can also find us on Zelle through 510. 417-8000. And you also can find us on Cash App as MD Salsa. We are always thankful for whatever you can do. And we thank you all. And I know I love you from the depths of my heart. And we are all in this together. And I again, Mama, we love you. We will see you in a few minutes. To all those on Zoom, we thank you so much. To all those who are on social media with us today, we thank you all so much. And those of you who are in the sanctuary today, to God be the glory. Amen. Wonderful you message. look great today. And on our departure, as we give us a word of prayer, again, it's good to see Dad, Minister Jackson, in the house with us today. Amen. And we have some great things about to happen in one way of You haven't seen nothing yet. Amen. Oh, God be the glory. We are so excited to see family and friends with us today. And again, I'm just always excited. I love you all. And I want all of you to have a blessed, great, and prosperous day. Um, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And remember, Amen. we must make sure. We don't have any extensions or ended or any extended things in front of us. We must be plugged in to the source. And Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches, and you're going to bear much fruit. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. I love y'all so much. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for all who were gathered here today in the sanctuary, yes. those who are yes. with us on Facebook, those with us on Zoom. Lord, we pray for travel grace as each person depart from here but not your sight Amen. until we meet again. God loves us. God loves you and I love you too. We ask these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 started losing his breath, his voice as he was speaking. He said he couldn't breathe. So let's just get him. He's praying for us, so we got to pray for him. Amen. 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 Love y'all so much. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Mom, just don't pray for us. He, he's always praying for us. Lord Jesus, I didn't know that. Right. Well, you didn't catch you without saying. Father God, Lord, we thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we come gathered here to lift up our pastor, our yes. brother, yes. cousin, whatever he is, our Father Heaven. Let's just lift, we lift him up to you because yes, the devil Lord. is busy. Yes, yes, Lord. Marvin is working the streets, yes. spreading the word, but yes. the devil doesn't like that. Amen. Some men don't like it. 
So let's just gird him up. Yes. Give him the strength, the yes. power to continue. Yes, Lord. Yes. And most of all, the desire. Because Marvin has the desire. It's not just to show or an act. Amen. This is a life for him. Yes. Next person gone is just seal. Lift him up. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly yes, Father, Lord. we just come before you, Lord, with humble hearts and ask yes. you, Lord Jesus, to touch Marvin and keep him protected. Yes. Cap your angels around him, Heavenly Father. Yes. Keep him protected as he go and come, Lord Jesus. Yes. Keep, keep the word in him as yes. he gives the word to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, God, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we Read the blood of Jesus. Yes. Lord, yes. Right now, yes. if he get weak, oh Heavenly Father, he's doing your will, not yes. his. Yes. Lord, we just thank you right now. Yes. Lord, burn him up in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh yes. Heavenly Father, we just asking you to regulate his heart and his mind. Yes. Lord, bless him and keep him, yes. and strengthen him while he's doing your work. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. we pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Father in heaven, we come before you right now. Yes. I don't know what's going on within him, but yes. whatever it is, Father, we rebuke it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Help him strength. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah, 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 Power source. Yes. A power source. Yes, Jesus. Plus and turn the power source. Yes. Yes. No weapon form of shall prosper. Yes. Because the plug and the power source. Do all things through Christ. Yes. Strengthens me. Yes, yes. Strengthens us. Yes, Lord. Because the plug and two. The power. Yeah. Nothing will ever be able to stop what God has already yes. planned. Yes. Yes. He's not the root. He's one of the branches. Yes. 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 Abides in him is the yes. same thing that abides yes. in us, Lord. Yes. 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 You God and you God alone. Yes. You're the doctor. Yes, Jesus. You're the doctor. Yes. yes. Jehovah Rapha. Yes. You are the heal. Yes. Hallelujah. You are the heal. Yes. Lord, we're calling on you. Yes. Because our faith moves us this way. Yes, Jesus. Because our faith we're standing on. Yes. Because we know you're able. Yes. Yes. You've already diagnosed the problem yes. Yes. way before me yes. yes. Before the doctor. Before the doctors. Yes. yes, Jesus. Anybody you already know. Hallelujah. Yes. Situation. Yes. Yes. You are conqueror. Yes. Yes. Jesus. You made him the head and not the tail. Yes. Yes. You made him the head, and Lord, you placed him. In a place, and Lord, it's your yeah. strength, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. it's your healing. Yeah. Glory. We ain't even concerned about what Lord. the devil can Lord. do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. We know what yeah. you yeah. can do. Yeah. 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 We're not concerned yeah. about yeah. saving yeah. his yeah. way. Because yeah. we already know he's a liar yeah. still yeah. and a yeah. deceiver yeah. come yeah. to destroy, but we're standing on your work. Yeah. 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 Your power. Yeah. 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 Now lift him up. Yes. 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 Touch his body. Yes. Touch his soul. Yes. Yes. Top his head to the bottom of his skin. Yes. Yes. Every vein in his body, the yes. blood is running yes. through, Lord. Yes. Yes. The breath that's running through his body, the oxygen, Lord. Do it now. Do it. Body, Lord. Yes. You already know 
Have mercy. Have mercy. I agree. We don't have to say more mercy because it was all given in the throne. Yes. We just say mercy now. Mercy. In yes. the name of Jesus. In yes. yes. the name and the power of Jesus. Yes. 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 The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Amen.